So thank you everyone to taking to your Twitter devices and submitting questions for this weekend Q&A video. Let's see if we can have some fun with this, shall we? Ah, who knows. Let's begin. Alwyn to the... See, I'm mystified here. Alwyn to the what? To the what, sir? To the what? Kicks us off by asking, is the fiend ruined? No, but give it time. It didn't take him long, did it? It didn't take him long. Should not be a surprise to any of us. Byron Andreas, how do you feel about Tessa Blanchard wrestling in mixed gender matches in Impact Wrestling? My honest thoughts on intergender wrestling in general? I hate it. I think it's fucking stupid. Want me to go on a little more and probably piss some people off? I'll be glad to. When things such as the child custody system, the child support system, and things like that, and especially views on domestic violence are more equivalent to where they are not so slanted in women's favor, then we can start entertaining this conversation. But you are expecting me to suspend my disbelief to a level of sheer stupidity if you're expecting me to believe that a Tessa Blanchard could go with a 200 pound plus guy. This is not sexist, this is science. And if science is sexist, so be it, I guess. It's like I had an ex-girlfriend that was all like five foot two, five foot three, and could swear up and down that she could kick my ass if she wanted to. And I'm not a super strong guy. I don't work out. Shame on me for not doing so. But nonetheless, you know, I'm five ten and a half, two hundred. Like really? Like estrogen has clouded your mind that much. You are that fucking delusional. I can pick you up. You can't pick me up. But yet you're gonna beat my ass. No fucking way. Now if it was some two hundred fifty, three hundred pound woman. Maybe a different story. But even then, you just look at the science of sports and you say two of the fastest women in track and field history, Florence Griffin Joyner and Marion Jones. One, a proven drug cheat, and the other one in Flojo, a relatively known and understood drug cheat. And even when you look at Flojo's severely wind-aided 100-meter world record that has stood for 31 years, going back to 88 in the U.S. Olympic trials. It's still, what, 10-4-8, 10-4-9? The men's 100-meter record is down in the 9-5s. You look at weightlifting, you look at things like shot and disc and just all of these other things. You know, women can do incredible things in sports, too. You look at gymnastics as a perfect example of it. Figure skating is a perfect example of it. Those are sports right there where you could say that it's more fun, it's more pleasing to watch women do it than men do it. But nonetheless, nonetheless, you have so many athletic indicators that tell you that the fastest woman in the world in a lot of states in this country wouldn't even win the 100-meter high school state boys championship. But yes, somebody like a Tessa Blanchard is going to be the guy her size or much bigger. Give me a fucking break. And anybody that subscribes to this logic, fuck you. It's stupid. You label me a sexist all you want. I don't care. Because goddamn it, at some point in time, a little logic has to creep in here too. The King asks, why isn't Meltzer viewed as just another mark? I think in some circles he is, and in a lot of circles he's not, because he happens to align with what other people like in terms of wrestling and their taste, and he has done a lot to help kind of cultivate and, you know, kind of guide that perspective in wrestling fans. And a lot of people have grown up knowing Meltzer for years and years, so they don't really associate him with being the mark that he is. But then I would say, how much of a mark is he really? He's one of the great workers in wrestling history because he's never had to take a bump his wrestling opinions are largely idiotic, incredibly biased, and yet he's pulling in six figures to do that. Who's the mark here? Just saying. Wrestling 10 asks, how would you break up the New Day? Just have Biggie walk away from him one day, say, 
I need to go on and do my own thing. I'm not trying to do some big, long heel turn, da-da-da, fuck it. No. Just get Biggie the hell away from that crap. Vols fan, where would AEW ratings have to hover around um, by the beginning of next year to be considered a success? I would like to see them a little bit higher than what they were for the second week. If they were around the first week numbers, which I think is a big, a big, big reach to expect that consistently, then they would be a success. Uh, the numbers they put up last week are just adequate enough. So if they maintain those numbers, that's at least adequate. It at least gives them a fighting shot in 2020, but they got to be a little better. Kieran Chase, who wins in a match between Double J and Dolph Ziggler? First of all, <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. Second of all, no questions from bronies today. Mounties Corner, pick one to start your promotion. Double J or Dolph Ziggler? These guys are funny. It's almost like a theme. Well, let me respond. <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. And I have yet to hear Mountie about you putting a baby in your wife. A little less tweeting about these questions. Should you be pounding puss? Unbelievable. Make pro wrestling great again. Have you watched NWA Power yet? No, I haven't. I actually might today. I've seen so many people tweeting about it and people talking about they liked it, which is either really setting me up for disappointment or there's enough people talking about it that maybe it is worth considering. If the show is only an hour, what the hell? Why not? I will give it a chance. So yes. And if I feel it's worthy of doing so, I may review it. Troy the Gamer HD. Are big men in wrestling the new underdogs? It most certainly seems that way, doesn't it? I can look at AEW. It's the land of a thousand midgets for the most part. And a guy like the Luchasaurus, a 6'5 fucking Mexican in a lucha mask, that you're naming after a damn dinosaur who does tail whips with his legs, can't get on TV either of the first two weeks when he is damn sure going to be one of those signature stars for your brand. You choose not to feature him, so that way you can feature Sammy fucking Guevara. The hell are the priorities here, people? Stephen Hilton, who has the greatest ego? In professional wrestling. Is it the game, the King of Kings, the Cerebral Assassin, Hunter Hearst Helsley, Triple H, God? I think you're going for a theme here. And you're wrong. The greatest ego in professional wrestling history. I'll go with Austin. He either refused to put people over, see SummerSlam 99. He would put people over when it didn't matter and it was too late, see WrestleMania 19. Or he would literally quit because he didn't want to put somebody over, see Brock Lesnar Raw 2002. Talk about Hogan, you talk about Michaels, you talk about Brett, you talk about God, you talk about Vince. I mean, everyone talks about Austin's ego and how massive it was. Tony Selby, should Rusev start teaming with Mike Canellas and they calling themselves the Young Cucks? <laughs> you should. You should. They should be peddling t shirts to white girls that have written on it. Black D for me, please. Maybe their other shirt is, take my wife, please. <laughs> yes, yes. Give me a Young Cucks team any day of the week. Daniel William Clark, would you consider the Elite to be AEW's breakfast club? Hell no. I get where you're going from, from a closeness of comparison, but they got a long, 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 a long way to go. They haven't main evented nearly enough pay-per-views. They haven't made nearly enough dollars. And they haven't buried nearly enough talent on AEW's Dynamite show yet. So that's not even up for consideration at this point. Johnny Brocks. 
If the plan all along was for The Fiend to be on SmackDown, doesn't that make the Hell in a Cell ending even more ridiculous? Yes. 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 Nick Willis, PNW. My brother suffers from extreme insomnia. What should I prescribe? Ricochet's promos? ROH? <laughs> or Seth Rollins' title run? I'll say the thing about Ricochet's promos is while they are intense in their suck factor and boredom levels, they're very short. So while they are powerful, I don't think that truly cures the insomnia. Either ROH or a Seth Rollins title reign is most certainly a better prescription. And I'm not sure which one is worse. Oh, God. Stephen Bradley, did Brock winning the title have to do with Fox and their conservative agenda? No. As much as it might be easy to point to that and be like, oh, your first night on Fox, of course Fox doesn't want the black man being their champion. At the same time, say this about Fox, from a television standpoint, a lot of what they were built off of as a network, especially in the early 90s, it was very heavy with them diving into black fans and black viewers, the black marketplace, and black audiences with shows like In Living Color, Martin, uh, the living single, like, you get what I'm saying? Rock for a while, the PJs. Like, I can go on and on and on. So, from a pure television product standpoint, it's not exactly like this has been a company that's always been that opposed to featuring the black man. I think this has more to do with this has been in the plan for months. Fox wanted a more sport-like presentation of SmackDown, and they felt Brock Lesnar was the logical guy for that. What they did to Kofi and how he lost it, perhaps, is more of an indictment on WWE than it is Fox. Even though it makes you wonder if people like Sean Hannity, Tucker Carlson, and Laura Ingram are on the damn creative team for WWE for SmackDown now. And with Eric Bischoff being there in charge of producing the show, it most certainly would be possible. But no, I don't think it's that. I think it's the other factors I've kind of laid out. B.W. Roses, what's the point of the draft if certain superstars remain on their show? Well, if you were just going to switch everybody from one show to the other, then it defeats the purpose of the draft, too. I mean, some people are going to change shows, some people are going to stay. So I don't have a problem with that. I think the larger point is, what was the point of doing the draft in the way that they did? It was horrible. Wavy Wade, would you ever collab with Good Might Work? Absolutely. freaking lutely why wouldn't I? I would collab with just about anybody on a video or appear on their video or have them appear on one of mine. It would be bad business to not do so. Welly, what is the worst year ever in wrestling? And this is the last question of the Q&A. Some people point to like 93 and 95, and those are bad years. You might look more recently over the past five or six years and say, you know, one of these recent years is really, really bad. And you're not that far off. But for my money, it's always going to be 2001. Both WCW and ECW died, and we got the invasion angle and the Austin heel turn. Those are four pretty bad, shitty things. And at that point in time, instantly, millions of people that used to love wrestling and watch wrestling every week no longer did. The worst year in wrestling in history, in my opinion, is 2001. You'd be damned to tell me otherwise. Anyways, thanks for all of you that submitted your questions. I'm the Schleich Daddy, the Angry Wrestling Man, and this is OTRS Central. Not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Bye, everybody.